Page six now, more accolades for anti-Americanism. In Cambridge, Massachusetts, former NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick is being lauded again, this time at the friendly confines of Harvard. Colin Kaepernick leaving the Sanders Theater after he electrified Harvard. The former NFL quarterback was among eight recipients of the W.E.B. Du Bois Award, honoring those who've made significant contributions to black culture. Video was not permitted, but photos captured the crowd on their feet for the man who wasn't afraid to take a knee in protest against racial injustice. Wow. Between this phony award ceremony at Harvard and the Nike commercials, you would think that Kaepernick is some kind of war hero from Afghanistan, or maybe a first responder who saved people in the Florida hurricane, or someone who launched a successful business and created a lot of jobs? What exactly has Colin Kaepernick done to deserve all of this positive attention? Joining me now, the founder of the American Truth Project and Daily Ledger contributor, Barry Newsbaum. Barry, how about, uh, how, how about Kanye West? You know, here's a guy, he's a producer, and I'm not talking about a record producer. He's a producer in our society. He's created a business. He employs a lot of people. He's a positive element in our society. I don't think anything positive comes out of Colin Kaepernick. Well, Graham, I guess it depends on your viewpoint of what is a hero. Uh, Colin Kaepernick has become the hero to the poor me movement. He uh, supposedly sacrificed everything. This is a guy that has a hundred million dollar fortune, lives in a, in a mansion two blocks long, and is making tens of millions of dollars from Nike, not to mention the hundred million dollars he made in the NFL, and he's a hero. This is a guy that gave up nothing, comes from a very nice middle class background, highly educated, got bounced out of the NFL because he wasn't any good anymore. For the life of me, I can't even imagine what he gave up. He has produced nothing but controversy, hatred, and divisiveness, and a whole lot of anti-American, anti-veteran rhetoric. I consider him an anti-hero. The only people that love him are the poor me movement, the social justice warriors that want an excuse for why their lives aren't better. By the way, I, we should point out that the, the line of the week, it wasn't for me, I, I can't take credit for this. This was uh, at a campaign rally that Donald Trump was at, was the economy in the United States is so good, even Colin Kaepernick uh, found the job. I, I think that kind of puts it in uh, perspective. But here's another one to think about, uh, Barry, and that is this White House aide, Stephen Miller, who's a very pro border security kind of guy, and he's not afraid to say it, especially on Twitter, if you follow him. Yet we have his third grade teacher in Los Angeles now berating him. Oh yeah, this guy, Stephen Miller, while he may be a brilliant political genius and a policymaker extraordinaire and a top flight, highly rated political consultant, not only the president, but in his previous career, get this, Graham, ate glue in third grade off his arm. There's no question he is unqualified for anything in life, and I applaud his third grade teacher for coming forward. <laughs> this is, seriously, Graham, yeah. we've entered the age of Kavanaugh insanity syndrome. Dig up dirt from hundreds of years ago on someone prominent because there is no current dirt, and you are guilty until proven innocent. I hope the third grade uh, contemporaries of Stephen Miller come forward and say, we ate glue too. The whole class ate glue and we thought it was fine. And that should clear his good name. You know, it's, it's an unbelievable that we're talking about eating glue on national television. I think that's, that teacher is sniffing too much glue. <laughs> Guys, now the movie. Now this is one that all Americans should see, especially if they don't know the story because it was largely ignored. It was almost completely ignored by the Obama administration, largely ignored when this entire calamity was going down. I think this movie is gonna change the dialogue in something no one talks about. Whether you're pro-life or pro-choice, the question that no one ever addresses is what is an abortion? This guy, Dr. Gosnell, apparently delivered over the course of his illustrious career as a doctor in Philadelphia, hundreds of live babies that he then killed, according to his testimony, by cutting their spinal cords with a scissor. And 
all kinds of other violations. It's like several hundred things he did that they can prove. The real debate ought to be not whether abortion is okay or not or when, but what is an abortion? This is a horror story. This guy is a mass murderer of hundreds and hundreds of live, functional, surviving babies that he killed. And why this isn't in movie theaters across the country ought to tell you something about who controls the media. In all of New York City, Graham, get this, one movie theater is playing the movie. One where it normally would have been in 500 theaters. That ought to tell you something, shouldn't well, it? It sure does. And, and fortunately, we now have digital release, and, and hopefully uh, a lot more Americans will have access to it uh, digitally as well, because it was this entire story. It's a true story. It's a heinous true story. But it was largely ignored by the mainstream media. We didn't ignore it on this program and this network, but the rest of the mainstream media uh, pretty much did. And what I, concerns me more than anything, Barry, is this guy was caught, this character was caught. How many others out there exist right now who have not been caught? Barry, thanks.